Welcome to Let's Talk Schools, where Fulton County Schools takes the opportunity to talk about what's happening in our school district to keep our community, our family members informed. Today, I have two special guests with me, and I'll start with you, Mr. Jones. Why don't you introduce yourself? Certainly. Cliff Jones, Chief Academic Officer, Fulton County Schools. Excellent. And I am Dr. Juma Whitaker. I serve as the Deputy Chief Academic Officer here in Fulton. Glad to have you all on Let's Talk Schools today. Today, I wanted to dive into school testing. Every spring across the country, students engage in testing as a result of, of requirements from federal and state governments. And so I know that our community has been wondering what's going to happen with milestones this year, given that we've been in a pandemic for the last two years. So, Mr. Jones, you want to share the latest update? Sure. We've received word from the Georgia Department of Education just recently that testing is back on. Milestones this year will count for content mastery and participation. So be ready, parents and students, to receive word about preparation and participation moving into April 25th for middle and high school and May 3rd for elementary. So Dr. Whitaker, this is gonna catch some families off guard. Uh, the information is coming a little bit late and we weren't sure about testing because of what we experienced last year. Yes. So talk to us about how you think um, our students are prepared despite the fact that this news is coming a little bit late. Despite the news is coming late, Dr. Looney, we have been teaching and we have been learning. So I do believe our students are prepared. We have ensured that our students are learning at grade level. We are teaching at grade level and we're also assessing. So we are, we've been tracking the data, we've been watching our students and we've been remediating where we needed to, where we needed to close those gaps and then also accelerating where we see our students have achieved and they can go further. Right, I know that when I was a student in elementary school and high school, we took, we took standardized tests. I don't remember the names of them specifically but I know that at times I felt anxious about those tests. Mm -hmm. So do these tests count for students in a significant way this year? So when you look at both end of course tests, which our high school students take, those do count 20%, just like any normal final exam would, and those are in four courses. In our uh, elementary and middle school students, they take end of grade tests. Mm -hmm. And what we're gonna do with those results is that we're looking to talk with our board about waiving promotion retention requirements that are historically been related to these tests because there's no retest this year. We're gonna take these and form a new baseline of academic achievement moving forward. So for all the kids and parents and teachers out there who have any kind of anxiety related to this, know this, this is a base year, baseline year, and we're gonna take that and run with it and move forward knowing that we can do this. We can take what we've learned, take what we've taught as teachers, just as Dr. Whitaker has said, and move forward and see where we are. So Dr. Whitaker, what would you, if, if parents or students have concerns or questions that are specific about a grade level and or a subject matter, who do they go to first to get their questions answered about you know, the tests? Um, we've given the dates today, you know, what's going to be on the test and, and that sort of thing. Well, I always tell a parent the number one person you should talk to, obviously, is their teacher. That is the person that understands that content and that curriculum best. But know that our school leaders will be providing parents with information regarding what will be on the test at that specific grade level or in that content. We will also give them tips on how to support their children at, during that testing time. One of the questions I always receive is, what can I do to help? One of the first things I always tell a parent is to make sure your child is getting a good night's sleep before going into testing. That is critical. And then of course, there are ways in which you can support their academics and we're going to provide that parent friendly language to our parents so that they can be prepared just like our students. So this series will air well before the end of the course and end of year grand of grade assessments. So between now and, and those assessment windows, um, there's things that parents should be reassured of. Mm -hmm. One is 
we're not going to be teaching to the test. I hope you're going to say that's correct. That's correct. We're not teaching to the test. But we, what are we teaching to then? We teach to the Georgia standards. We have prioritized the Georgia standards in our standards mastery framework. And those priority standards are what every teacher across this district, from Palmetto all the way up to River Trail, is teaching on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is what is not only expected of our teachers, but that ensures that our students are not only ready for the test, but ready for life. Okay, so if students have been going to school, attending class, and engaged in the learning throughout this year, mm -hmm. then we've taught them the content that's going in the test, and all they have to do is apply it on the test. Is that what you're saying? That is. You know, when we look at, just like when I used to be a coach, we practice like we're gonna play. And we've been practicing all year in Fulton County Schools. We've been learning the standards. We've been having unit assessments. We've been having sometimes a quiz, sometimes a homework, but all of that builds. And our students are not only ready for the content, but they're ready for the assessment as it's going to be delivered in the milestones. So let's imagine for a moment we're high school students. You mentioned at the onset that for high school students, end of course tests count as part of a student's end of year grade. Did you say 20%? 20%. So what advice as the chief academic officer and his deputy, um, what advice would you give students uh, at the high school level that are gonna have to, to take the um, end of course exam and to their parents as we run up to the testing window here in a couple of months? If I was a student, I would have a study buddy. Right. If I was a parent, I would go over the plan leading up to the test with my student. What's the plan? If, again, going back to the study buddy, are we reviewing the standards? Are we preparing like we need to? Just like we would do for any unit test, we need to do that for our, our end of course test. And parents, have that discussion with your, with your student. What is their plan? Who are they studying with? And then if you have questions, go to the teacher. Say, hey, where is that review sheet or when is that review session so that I can make sure my student's not only ready for the test, but ready for the review. And if I would add, Dr. Looney, know that this is a course or a cumulative assessment. So right now our students are engaged in second semester, but they're gonna need to go back to that learning and that content from first semester as well. And just making sure that they understand the course in its entirety, that's gonna be critical for a lot of those end of course tests. And are, are school teachers in our district gonna go back and provide review materials for the end of course assessment to facilitate student success? Yes. Yes, they do. That is one of the things that when you think about the commitment of our educators and our teachers, specifically at the high school level, they understand that this is a cumulative assessment. And so they are going to ensure that that's there as well. So as I understand it, if this is a cumulative test, this is not a, a test that students can you know, do the crash, uh, the crash <laughs> studying right before the exam type of test because it's a content throughout the entire year. That's mm -hmm. right, go back to that plan. The plan mm -hmm. is really important for them to, to review both first semester and second semester material, and with whom. You know, learning is social, so to make sure that they have a study buddy or study group, and I would encourage parents maybe host that study buddy, study group at their house so that they can ensure that that part is happening. Now I wanna address, I think, an obvious question. Some, some of our students and families and educators are gonna say, you know what, we've been through a pandemic, learning has been disrupted for the last couple of years, it's not fair for us to test this year. Mm -hmm. And I understand that, that perspective, but, but we didn't make the decision as a school district, the state made it for us as a result of federal government requirements. So how do we respond, how do we show empathy and acknowledge that there is an element of perceived unfairness about testing this year? There is an element of um, perceived unfairness. Uh, some, of, some people are still being truly impacted by the pandemic, and we are aware of that. However, we still need to know what our students know and also what they don't know because it's imperative for us to know those two things so that we can help their trajectory and their recovery. So it's, a, it's almost 
it's even more imperative that we know what they know and what they don't know so that we can help close that gap. So it's going to give us all information that's really important post-pandemic to say, okay, this is where we are relative to where we would have been mm -hmm. if the pandemic hadn't happened. And then we can develop a plan, an individualized plan in many respects, about how to get students caught up or to close those learning gaps that may have been created. Definitely. Um, so I, I have an, another question. This, in the, in the past, we, we've included growth, student growth scores, but mm -hmm. this time I heard you say that's not the case, that it's gonna be the score, the, the level of, of uh, mastery of the content. Mm -hmm. And did you say participation? I did. So traditionally what we see, um, maybe towards the end of summer, is the state comes back with a school grade. And that school grade has a whole host of metrics involved in creating it. It's not only based on content mastery, sometimes it also includes readiness, progress, closing gaps, a whole host of things. This year, we're looking at two th items really closely, content mastery and then participation. Schools will get an overall school content score, and that will be done in combination with 95%, which is the expected baseline of participation, as part of their overall content achievement score. If it's less, a school's content score will be impacted. And so what I really need, not only parents and students, but also teachers and the broader community to understand is, we need to go take these tests. 95% is what the state has given us as the minimum level, and we're gonna have rolling makeups for parents and or students who have something that come up on, on testing day all the way through May 20th to ensure that we can reach that 95% participation rate at each school, in each grade level, um, and we can do it. So what is, if well, there's an opt-out provision in the state of Georgia, parents can't opt out, but there is a negative consequence first for the school because it, if we don't have 95% participation, the school's score go down mm -hmm. and potentially gets on some list uh, from some government agency for needs improvement. And those are always hard because that impacts the values of homes, it impact, impacts the perception about the quality of schools. What's the impact of a high school, from a high school student if they don't take the test? When you look at an EOC and you don't take the EOC and it's 20% of your grade, that has a, a dramatic in, impact on, on one's grade. You can choose not to, you certainly can choose. And just like you said, Dr. Looney, opt out is, a, is an option that is, that is given. Um, but what we can't opt out of is the 20% for a high school student. Wow, so if a student, let's just say a student's a B student and has an 80 in the class, the parents and the student choose not to take the test, then their, their score goes down to a 60 based on my simple arithmetic. It or, certainly is impacted yeah, for okay. sure, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we really need families and students to participate at a high, very level yes. um, to, to make sure that students' uh, grades are not negatively impacted and to make sure that schools' reputations and, and quality uh, per, as perceived by the community is not impacted. I'm glad that you reminded 95%, that seems attainable, 95% mm -hmm. of our students taking the test. Um, okay, good deal. Well, would you give us any other final words of wisdom as we approach the, the uh, testing window that's not too far away from now? I think I would reiterate the two Ps, be prepared and definitely participate. Those are the two things that we really need our families to do. We need to make sure that our students are prepared and that's what we're going to do and that's what we have been doing as a district. But most importantly, th the parents, please have your students participate. It will help us plan for the future. And I would say this is a baseline year. Testing is a time where, where certain students and, and families are anxious. Mm -hmm. um, if we collectively breathe, we show what we've learned, it becomes an experience where we can be successful. Um, and this is our first step towards showing the success that we've had. Fulton County School community members, parents, students, I'm excited about this year's testing. 
The truth is it's not something that we wished on you. It's something that we have to do. But I do think this is an opportunity to show that we've been resilient despite the pandemic and that our students have continued learning. I hope that people do participate. And I certainly know that our teachers will have your children prepared. Thank you for joining this session of Let's Talk Schools. Thank you.